Shalom. Welcome to Fruitful Possession. My name is Sister Jemima. Welcome to the Daughters of Israel. So today's class will cover the basics of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding patterns. In the first weeks, breastfeeding can take up a lot of your time. But as your baby gets better at it, it will take less time. You can also expect some clustered feedings. This is when he nurses frequently for several feedings and then takes a break before feeding again. Your baby will also have days when he eats more often. This usually lasts between one and four days and is a natural way of building your milk supply to meet his growing needs. The more you breastfeed, the more milk your body makes. So it's important to feed your baby often from both of your breasts. Offer both breasts throughout the day. Let your baby feed from the first breast as long as he keeps sucking and swallowing. If you need to remove your baby from your breast, gently break the suction by placing a clean finger in the corner of his mouth and over your nipple. Try to burp your baby. He may not need to. Offer the second breast, but don't worry if he doesn't take it. At the next feeding, start on the side that wasn't drained as much at the previous feeding to encourage healthy milk supply. Burping your baby. Burp your baby after nursing to get rid of any gas he may have swallowed. Burping is a great way for your husband to help out and spend time with the baby during feedings. Don't worry if nothing happens. Breastfed babies don't always need to be burped. Let's talk about how to burp your baby. Put a cloth under his chin in case of spit ups. Hold him while he's sitting up in your lap. Support his chest and chin with one hand and gently pat his back with the other. Once your baby has better head and neck control, you can hold him against your chest with his chin on your shoulder. Avoid pacifiers. Early use of pacifiers can make it harder for your baby to breastfeed successfully and could reduce your milk supply. That's why it's best to stay away from them. Unless there is a medical reason for it. Thank you for listening to this Fruitful Possession Health Tip Moment. Myths and facts about breastfeeding. Many women are concerned about breastfeeding their babies. Getting the facts straight is the first step to successfully breastfeeding your baby. Myth. Formula is as good as breast milk. Fact. Breast milk is better than formula, containing everything your baby needs for healthy growth and development. Myth. Breastfeeding is inconvenient. Fact. Breastfeeding is more convenient than bottle feeding. A baby can be breastfed anytime, anywhere. Breast milk is free, pre-prepared, pre-warmed, and ready to use. Myth. It is too hard to breastfeed while working or going to school. Fact. Many mothers continue to breastfeed after they return to work or school. They are able to breastfeed during the day if the baby is close by or to pump breast milk for caregivers to feed to their babies. Myth. Breastfeeding is painful. Fact. Ongoing pain is not a normal part of breastfeeding. If you are experiencing pain, it may be a result of incorrect positioning or poor latch-on technique. 
a lactation consultant or your health care professional can help. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becomes women professing godliness with good works. 1 Timothy chapter 2, 9 and 10. Myth. Breastfeeding in public requires that a woman's breast be exposed. But of course, you always want to breastfeed in private quarters with your baby. Fact. A woman can breastfeed discreetly, practically anywhere. So if you're able to breastfeed in a breastfeeding room, or at home, all praises to the most high. You can wear clothes that provide easy access, drape or cover over the shoulder, or carry your baby in a sling and adjust the fabric to cover herself while breastfeeding in a private room or at home. Myth. Women who have given birth by cesarean can't breastfeed. Fact. Having a cesarean section does not affect a woman's ability to produce milk. Some breastfeeding positions like side lying, football or clutch hold and cradle hold can help a woman breastfeed comfortably until her incision has healed. Myth. Women who breastfeed can't safely lose weight until their babies are weaned. Fact. Although breastfeeding women should not go on a strict weight loss regimen, breastfeeding actually contributes to gradual healthy weight loss, burning approximately 500 calories a day. Myth. If a mother is taking medication, then she should stop breastfeeding. Fact. Check with your healthcare professional before taking prescription or non-prescription medications. Most medications are perfectly safe to take while breastfeeding. Thank you for listening to this fruitful possession health tip moment. We're going to talk about the benefits of breastfeeding the Israelite baby. So let's talk about if you decide to breastfeed or if you're expecting a child now and you plan to breastfeed, you and your Lord have discussed that and you decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I know it's in the Bible. I'm going to breastfeed my baby. All praise to the most high for that. So if you decide that you're going to do this, this is wonderful. And some of the benefits that you can pass on to your Israelite baby include a stronger immune system for that baby, stronger bones, they will have a higher IQ, they will have a very low risk of developing asthma or a type 1 diabetes. Um, you may even find that your child has a very uh, low risk of getting otitis media or ear infections compared to a lot of other kids. And you'll probably notice that your, your child is not getting sick all the time, they're not getting pneumonia, they're not getting colds, they're not uh, catching viruses, and they don't need vaccines as often as other kids, even though you, they may be around other children in school that may have colds. Your child just seems to be much, much healthier. And you may even notice that they're not as picky with foods and their systems are much stronger. They can digest other foods. They won't actually get things uh, like celiac disease or Crohn's disease. You'll notice it's very uh, limited. You won't, you'll notice that uh, your children won't get sick with, with plenty of things like that. So let's talk about some other things as well. Not only are all those benefits very uh, beneficial to the Israelite baby, you'll notice as well when you give them your breast milk, uh, they're, they're taking in antibodies to help fight infections, bacterial infections. Um, they have um, a lot of vitamins and minerals that are going in from the breast milk as well. I'm going to read this to you too. Let's go down to the basics of what is included in breast milk. Because we may not know 
all the ingredients in it, but I like to focus in on some of the key elements of it. So it says, the breast milk has proteins in it, amino acids. So let's talk about that. Proteins, what does this help to do? If the, if the baby is being breastfed, how does proteins help the baby? It says proteins help your baby grow and develop. It activates the immune system and develop and protect neurons in the brain. The breast milk also includes amino acids, uh, and it says it helps to increase sleep. It'll actually induce sleepness in your baby. So if your baby is kind of cranky, things like that, um, or you, you're trying to make your baby go to sleep, you want the baby to have a good rest, give them your breast milk, and that will actually help promote a good night's sleep for the baby. Not only does it have that in there, it has allosaccharides, oligosaccharides, um, these are sugars. These are sugars. It says over 200 complex sugars are called oligosaccharides that act as prebiotics, feeding the good type of bacteria. We have good type of bacteria in our in our stomach. So uh, this type of good bacteria is in your baby's gut. And when you feed them your breast milk, this is what they're getting. It prevents infections. Um, entering the bloodstream and it helps to lower the risk of brain inflammation it also includes breast milk includes enzymes over 40 different types of enzymes and what do these enzymes do enzymes are catalysts that speed up chemical reactions in the baby's body so the ones in your milk uh, have jobs such as aiding your body your baby's digestive system and immune system so it's really good to uh, continue to breastfeed your baby so they also your, your breast milk also uh, includes hormones now what do these hormones do it says um, the, it says these clever chemicals send messages between tissues and the organs in your baby's body to ensure they work properly. Some help regulate your baby's appetite and sleep patterns and even aid the bond between you and your baby. All praise to the most high. So we know it also includes vitamins and minerals that helps build your baby's teeth and bones. So you're going to want to breastfeed your baby. You don't have to give them any, uh, you know, how you see those little child uh, versions of vitamins in the store when they get like two, three, four, five, they're chewable. You don't have to do any of that stuff if you breastfeed your baby. Um, and it also includes fatty acids as well, as well as other things as well. You can look on the internet to find out much, much more. So when it's compared to the formula milk that you often hear about, like Similac and other things, Similac and uh, baby formulas don't even compare to what the Most High has blessed you with um, in your breast milk. And you help to keep your health, your family healthy as well because your child just won't be out of school as much for getting sick. You'll save money. You don't have to take time off from work, for example, because your child's sick. Your husband doesn't have to take off time. You won't get sick. If the child's not sick, everyone is much healthier. And uh, all praise if the Most High bless you with your child longevity. Um, your child could live a very long life, a very long healthy life, like our forefathers and our foremothers in the Bible. So I just want to I want to talk about some benefits for the mother, and then I'm going to go over some basic scriptures on um, breastfeeding that, that's mentioned in the Bible. So you, if you decide to breastfeed the baby, how does this benefit you? How does it benefit the mother? Well, I'm going to tell you uh, first, like the calories, how many calories are in each ounce of milk. So when you're breastfeeding, you, um, there's about, you, you have about 20, um, for 20 calories are burned for each ounce of breast milk. So if you feed your baby about 20 ounces of milk, a day, you're going to burn about 400 calories. So 20 calories, there's 20 calories burned in an ounce of milk. And if you give your baby 20 ounces of milk a day, you'll burn up to 40, uh, 400 calories a day. And then you also reduce your chance of getting breast cancers and ovarian cancer and other cancers as well. 
You help to keep your bones stronger, much longer than a woman who did not breastfeed their baby. And when they get to the age around 35, 45, 55, when your bones are starting to get frail, they start to change. Your, your bones are much stronger. You, it has actually protected you from that. Um, if you decide to breastfeed, right after you have your baby, you have a lot of bleeding, you know, right after childbirth. Your body's healing up, you know, you just delivered your Israelite baby, so you have released the fetus, you have released the placenta, the amniotic sac came out, and the membranes are coming out, so your body's healing up. But if you continue to breastfeed, you're going to heal up a lot faster. It'll tighten up down there. The bleeding, the bleeding is so much less, and you're more fit because you're burning calories just by doing things like that. So um, I'm going to just take a break and go over a scripture with you before we continue on. Like how can you continue to breastfeed after you go back to work, things like that. So now I'm going to go to the book of uh, 2nd Esdras, chapter 8, verse, verses 8 through 10. And this is just an example of concerning breast milk. So I'm just going to take a minute. This is in the Apocrypha. I'm coming out of um, um, the 1611 King James Bible, and I'm just sharing scriptures with you. You know, like in Titus 2, 3 through 5, um, I'm going to read that to you first so you'll, uh, you'll understand why I'm reading this to you. I'm just sharing it with other sisters. So Titus 2, uh, verses 3 through 5, it says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, their babies too, uh, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So this is why I'm sharing this with you. I'm sharing the scriptures with you. So now I'm just going to go to the book of Second Esther. This is in the Apocrypha. And I'm coming out of the uh, 1611 King James Bible. So I'm going to go to uh, see, 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, verses 8 through 10. So it says, For when the body is fashioned now in the mother's womb, and thou givest it members, thy creature is preserved in fire and water. And nine months do thy workmanship endure, that creature which is created in her, but that which keepeth and is kept shall both be preserved. And when the time cometh, the womb preserved, delivereth up the things that grew in it. For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say, out of the breast, milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast. All praise to the Most High. So, um, you know, as far as benefits of breastfeeding, um, if you decide to do that, you may be um, either um, expecting a child or you um, you had children in the past and you're pregnant again um, and you decided this time, I, I didn't breastfeed last time, but I'm going to try it this time. Um, and then after you have your baby, you want to know, okay, well, what do I do? So what you do is you breastfeed your baby as often as you need to. Usually it's about a uh, every hour and a half to two hours, you breastfeed your baby. And as you're doing this, you're burning calories. So you'll, you'll want to know is why is it that um, when you go to work, what can you do to, um, you know, how can you continue to breastfeed at work if you don't have the privacy at home? You always want to make sure you have a nursing cover with you. And you want to dress in modest apparel, even though you may find, oh, this is great. I'm at this job and they set this room up for me. All praise the most high and going and breastfeed. You may see other Israelites or just other other women in their breastfeeding their baby, which is good. But, you know, they're not um, they're not uh, applying God's laws and they may not know they're Israelite, you know, whatever the reason is. But you can be that light, you know, that scripture, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Um, that's in um, the book of Matthew. I think that's in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Let me go to there. Um, it's, you know, you'll be that light to them. 
you be that example. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, when I go to work, I'm gonna cover myself up, or when I'm at home, I'm gonna cover myself up, or wherever I am, I'm gonna cover myself up, even though no one's really telling me I have to, you know, you know, at the job or wherever you're going. You, as you're applying God's laws, you just want to do that. So let me go to that first. Matthew chapter 5. Let's see where is that at. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So imagine you're going to work. If you have to work outside the house and you say, Okay, I'm going to breastfeed because you know there may be a daycare near the job, things like that. You be that example. You, you cover up yourself and you remember, you know, scriptures like in the book of 1 Timothy. Um, Chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And it says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves upon this apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So think about that. If you're if you're um, anywhere, you know, you can even be at home. You be a good example. You know, when guests come over, when your children are around, you want to cover up in front of your children too. You want to cover up at your job, um, even though they may not be covering up, right? Wherever you go, because you might be traveling with your Lord and your children, your family, and you have to cover up. So. And just think about it. if you're not covered up, but you're doing the right thing by breastfeeding, you're not applying, right, God's laws. Because now let's go to this other scriptures. Let's go to some other scriptures. So I'm talking about modest apparel. So I want to go to the, I need to go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5 first. Because if I'm talking about modest apparel, you can cover up, but if you're not dressed in modest apparel according to God's laws, you know, you're not fully there. So I want to give you the best advice I can share with you. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. So Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So I'm just talking about the sisters, right? So I'm talking about the sisters. I'm sharing this scripture with the sisters. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right? So um, as I was talking about 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, I was talking about modest apparel. Because even though you may be breastfeeding, at your job, you still want to dress modestly, no matter where it is. You want to just keep God's love wherever you go, to the best of your ability. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which become of women professing godliness with good works. So that's great if you have a big scarf, you know, that you want to cover yourself up with, um, or they have like these nursing covers too that you can kind of latch on. You can make them yourself. You want to cover yourself at all times. And you want to dress modestly. You know, you don't want to have your cleavage out. You know, you know how they have nursing bras so you lift them up. You want to do all that discreetly, uh, wherever you are. And I have one other scripture too, because imagine if you're breastfeeding, but you're not covering up. You say, well, I'm breastfeeding. It says in the Bible, I'm breastfeeding, you know, and, um, um, you know, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a dress, but I'm not, I'm not covering myself up because nobody else is doing it at the job. So they said it was okay. 
Or even if you're in a room by yourself, you say, well, I got this room to myself. I'm not covering up because nobody in the room. You never know. Somebody might accidentally come in. You know, even though there's a lot, you never know what may happen. You may, they may have cameras somewhere. You never know what's going on. Then you want to be covered. You don't want to, um, you're supposed to remember God's laws. So Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. I'm going to go to that. So it says, so just imagine, if you're not covered up and you have your, you know, you're out, your, 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 you know, your breasts are showing, it says this in Deuteronomy 23, verse 17, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So that's what the Most High is saying. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So there's more to the scripture, but I'm focusing on that right there. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So when you don't cover up, but you're... You know, you're breastfeeding your baby. That's what that's considered. And so by you sharing this with other sisters and you applying it yourself, you let your light shine because it's, oh, I'm, I'm not covering up. But I noticed that sister over there, she's, I said, no, that person, that is like, uh, she, she's, she's covered up. But I got my boobs out and I'm showing everybody because, it's, it, you know, there's no law against that. But God's laws is, is what really matters. You please him. All oh, praise to the most high. That's all that matters. So um, let's go on to, uh, let's see. Let's go on to uh, different types of places where you can possibly have your baby. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because you may decide, oh, well, I'm pregnant, and so I'm going to breastfeed. I got my nursery ready. I got everything ready. I know the scriptures and things like that. But um, my husband and I, we don't know where we're going to have our baby. And what are the choices out there, right? So there, there's different type of settings where you can have your baby. You can have it in a, uh, a uh, baby-friendly hospital. So not all hospitals are baby-friendly hospitals. In, in your state. So you're probably saying, what is a baby friendly hospital? Well, it's a place where they promote breastfeeding. That's pretty much it. They have uh, guidelines for that, on how they, steps of how they promote it. You know, like once you have the baby, what, what, what they actually do. Um, and so if you're gonna have your baby and you say, I can't have my baby at home, um, I can't have it at a birth center, I'm gonna have it at a hospital. If you can, you try to have your baby at a, a baby-friendly hospital if you if you and your Lord are deciding to breastfeed because they will, you know, help you with that. And so you can either have your baby in a baby-friendly hospital or you can have your baby at a birth center. A birth center is smaller and it's um, usually a group of midwives that run it. And um, you're in, you're in there much uh, shorter than in the hospital setting. You know, like what, the hospital setting? hospital setting, you um, you um, normally would have two days um, to, you know, to stay there admission. You will be admitted for two days. If you have a C-section, if things don't go well, usually they're between um, maybe three days, four days. Um, and in a, in a birth center, you're pretty much there. You go in maybe in the morning, you're pretty much out by that night. So, um, and then if you decide to have a baby at home, you have more choices. You have more choices. You can have a midwife there and so on and so forth. So, you know, I want to um, go over what is my role. Like, a lactation counselor is what I am. I'm a childbirth educator, so I educate uh, couples, uh, mothers, on the process of childbirth, um, comfort measures in childbirth, all kind of things. Um, labor and delivery, uh, the postpartum period after you have your baby, things like that. I also discuss lactation counseling, which is, there's two types. I wanna tell you the difference between the two types. So I'm a lactation counselor, and there's also something called a lactation consultant. So a lactation counselor, she educates you on breastfeeding benefits. There's all kinds of things, maybe even support systems. So she'll go over benefits to the mother, and the baby, how breastfeeding works, 
um, the differences between breastfeeding and formula feeding, um, maybe some, um, some supply companies for nursing bras, you know, pads, you name things like that. And um, a lactation consultant is someone who you would go to if you are experiencing breastfeeding difficulty. For example, you may have trouble um, breastfeeding because you're having difficulty with the latch, like the baby's not able to stay on your breast the whole time, so you're having difficulty, you've been trying everything. The baby is, is, is not latching onto you, then you have sore nipples, you just can't get it, you really want to breastfeed your baby, but it's just not going well. So if there's no one in the Israelite community that can help you, you can go to a, a lactation consultant and she will teach you hands on. And usually you find them in, um, they're pretty much in any setting. They could be in a baby-friendly hospital or another type of hospital. They could be in a private set setting. They could be in um, the community, in a, in a public health center. They could have their own practice. Some of them are lactation consultants and nurses, things like that. So that's pretty much the difference. You'll, you'll find lactation counselors uh, in hospitals, in small clinics, doctor offices, you know, public health uh, arena too so um, I would encourage you if you do need that then those are the resources for you so we're going to talk about um, before I go I'm going to talk about something to do with uh, why it's a good idea to um, this is off the subject a little bit but um, we're going to talk about natural deodorant and why that's good as well uh, even if you're not breastfeeding, you, you know, you've, you, you've, you're beyond that point, or if you are breastfeeding, why are we talking about uh, natural deodorant? Well, I just wanted to share this with you. I uh, learned how to make um, my own deodorant, and it's good to learn how to make your own deodorant, and there's a lot of different links on the website on how to make your own deodorant. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because... Uh, you know, your, your quadrant, you have four quadrants in your breast. You know, if you want to talk about like how to set up, you have the right upper uh, quadrant, you have the um, left upper quadrant, you have the right lower quadrant, and you have the left lower quadrant of your breast. And so in the right upper quadrant, it's like about right here where you put your deodorant. And a lot of the deodorants on the market, they have something called aluminum in them. And so aluminum has chemicals in it where, you know, it's known, it has like uh, carcinogens in it. There's an ingredient in it that actually causes cancer, breast cancer. So it's kind of good to learn how to make your own deodorant. You can make it with ingredients such as organic, you can use organic products. You can use organic shea butter organic coconut oil you can use um, this is you know you add them together organic coconut oil organic shea um, butter you can put in there a, an essential oil essential oil you can put arrowroot powder in it a r r o w root powder or cornstarch you know whichever one is best for you you can add uh baking soda and if you find you're irritated after using maybe a certain amount of baking soda, you can kind of taper off the baking soda. Sometimes you will have, um, someone will have a, a reaction to it. And then when your body is detoxing, you know, your underarms are detoxing from all that regular deodorant you've been putting up there, you might get some irritation down there at first. So you might want to take something like uh, organic or just, you know, whatever you can afford. Apple cider vinegar, just take a little, a dab of it. You get like one of those makeup pads cotton pads and lightly dip it in the uh, apple cider vinegar and kind of wipe it under your arm, just dab it under your arm for a little while. And then it usually takes a couple of weeks and it's purging it out. You're going to see some stuff come out. might be a little um, irritated and then after a while it should go away. Uh, but you can, you can find a recipe online to do that or you can purchase a natural deodorant for one of our Israelite stores online. So you just go look it up and see and you'll be able to find it that way. Or you can make it yourself. And you may not realize that you have most of the ingredients in your home. And it saves money. So for a recap 
for a recap of this class, um, just remember the benefits of breastfeeding are wonderful to you, your Lord, your baby, because you save money, right? You save money. You save time. Your, your family's not sick. If the baby's not sick, you know how usually when the family, somebody in the house gets a cold, it goes through the whole family? You don't experience that. Your husband's going to be happy. He can go to work if he has to go to work. If you're home with the kids, you have to worry about those things. you got a stronger bond with your baby. You know, you're always with them. And um, I meant to mention another thing, too. If you wear um, a baby sling, if you wear a baby sling, and a baby sling is something you carry your baby in. Now, you don't see a lot of our people doing that over here. But if you go on this website, our website, www.pinterest.com slash fruitful possession slash pins, you can scroll through the website and see examples of how our people, the Israelites, are wearing their babies on their front or their back, no matter what they're doing. You know, the so-called blacks. Hispanics and Native Americans are people, like in you know Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. You'll see it up there, but it's a, a good example. Um, you'll see them wearing it, and just think about it. If this will make your life easier too. If you are, if you got your baby in a baby sling, you are more often to think about wanting to give them breast milk. You you're used to your baby with you, and your baby wants to be with you more than you realize. Because you know, the baby can't really talk, but the baby just came out of you. And the baby's like, oh, you know, if you, you know how you see our people, they have babies in car seats and they bring them in stores or they bring them to wherever they're going, but they don't really have them in a sling. And a sling is great because you can wear the baby here, you can wear it in the back, and your arms are free. And even when you're home, you can have your baby in the sling. You can have the baby behind you or in the front. You know where the baby is. And you still can do whatever you want. And the baby's happy. Um, you experience skin to skin with your baby more. The, the baby is warm, secure. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. All praise from most high. So um, with that, I just like to, uh, I hope you enjoyed the class today. And, um, and uh, you know, you can go on our website to learn much more about breastfeeding, how to make uh breast milk recipes, you know, you use lawful ingredients. You'll see uh, uh, examples of how to make um, breast milk treats. You know, you can make ice cream, popsicles, put the ingredients in um, your baby food, things like that. You know, mix it in their oatmeal and keep it going after their teeth come in, maybe you know, a little over after one years old. And you say, well, I don't know, after one, his teeth are broke, he's walking around, I don't know if I should do that. You might be still lactating, producing milk, you know, after your baby's getting one, right? And you say, well, I don't know if I can keep doing this. So if you want to continue it, but you say, well, I don't know if I have time, but I'll, 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 I'll produce the milk, you can um, add it in those recipes. You can look online as well. But just remember God's laws, Leviticus chapter 11 about God's dietary laws. So when you make these recipes, you're looking for recipes online, you're looking for things like that, remember God's laws about that whenever you find a good recipe online and then you just make a lawful version of some baby treat, right, for the baby. And you don't have to use regular milk. you got your milk and it's, remember it has all those ingredients in it, those antibodies, the enzymes. It has vitamins and minerals in there. It has those growth hormones in there. Things to help regulate the body, all kind of things for the baby. And it's going to keep you healthy much longer. Your family can live a whole lot longer, all praises to the Most High. Your, happy, your husband will be very happy. Your Lord will be very happy. Um, and then you're teaching your children by your example. If they see you doing this, right? And they say, oh, okay, I know I was, I, I don't remember being breastfed, but I see mommy breastfeeding my brother and sister. So you're teaching the baby by example. So, you know, for example, I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, about training up a child in the way he should go. So let's talk about that before I go. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, 
and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So he's going to, he or she's going to say, oh, mommy fed me. And then I see mommy feeding my brother, my sister. When I grow up, I want, when I get grow up and I get married, I want that to happen as well. I know it's when I get sick in the family. Daddy's not sick. I'm not sick. He's not catching anybody's cold. Boy, daddy looks happy. It's like the family's so, you know, so much together, you know, all praise to the most high. And, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, you know, growing, growing and learning God's laws and, you know, applying it to everything here, which is wonderful. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for listening. All praise to the most high. You have a wonderful day. Most high and Christ blessed. Thank you.